It's everyone's favorite time of year, tax season. Jokes aside, I know that tax can seem complicated and stressful to many. I'm Gabrielle, a tax expert and founder of a tax specialized firm called Balance and Wealth CPA. And today I want to break down how you can pay less tax to the CRA for this tax season. With individual tax returns due April 30th, we are scrambling to gather any receipts to claim tax deductions and credits like medical expenses, tuition credits, childcare expenses, so that we can really squeeze out every dollar of tax that we owe. However, there is one big way to reduce your taxes even after the 2023 year is over, and that is contributing to your RRSP. You have until February 29th, 2024 to contribute to your RRSP and reduce your income dollar for dollar for the 2023 tax year. Let me show you how much taxes you can save this tax season and essentially get up to a 53.5% return on your investment. So let's get started. What is an RRSP? Just to give a quick background on what an RRSP is, it's a registered account with the Canadian government with the purpose to save towards your retirement. In an RRSP, you invest your money and earn income like interest, dividends, and capital gains on a tax deferred basis. This means that income grows in your RRSP tax free, unlike a regular investment account in which you would need to pay tax on your investment earnings every year. Now, tax deferred means that you eventually do get taxed, but that isn't until you make withdrawals from your RRSP later when you retire. The greatest tax advantage with an RRSP is that contributions you make are tax deductible, which reduces your taxes and can even get you a tax refund. Let's do a quick calculation to see how much taxes you can save. Calculations on tax savings. Let's say that you earn $70,000 per year. This means that your tax owing is $16,290 based on this calculator. If you are an employee, your employer has most likely deducted this amount from your paycheck every single pay period. However, let's say that you are able to contribute $5,000 to your RRSP. This means that you can get a refund of $1,410. Also, you can invest the $5,000 and earn investment income tax-free, all while reducing your taxes by $1,410 at the same time. Contributing to your RRSP is especially lucrative the higher your marginal tax bracket. In the case of an income level of $70,000, your marginal tax rate is 28.2%, meaning for every $1 of RRSP contributions, you can save 28.2 cents of taxes. For example, $5,000 times 28.2% is equal to $1,410 as mentioned earlier. But let's say that you are in the highest marginal tax bracket of 53.5%, earning over $240,716 in 2023. This means that every $1 contributed to RRSP, you can save 53.5 cents of taxes. So with a $10,000 contribution, you can actually save $5,350 in taxes. Another way to think about this is, can you think of an investment that can give you a return of 28.2% or even 53.5%? If you save on taxes by contributing to your RRSP, you can think of it as a return on your investment, plus you have the benefit of growing your investment tax-free. The compounding effect. If you are an employee, you have have very few options, unfortunately, when it comes to reducing your taxes. RRSP can be a powerful tool offering not just a tax deduction, but also an opportunity to invest in your retirement and earn investment income tax-free. The compounding effect of letting your investment income grow tax-free can be significant. For example, let's say that you contributed $10,000 and earn a return of 5% every year. In 25 years, if your tax rate is 53.5%, your projected savings will be $17,764. However, instead, let's say that you invested that same money in a tax deferred account like the RRSP. Then your savings is projected to be $33,864, almost double of the savings that was taxed. Now, when you do do withdraw that money upon retirement, you will be subject to taxes, but the assumption here is that the tax rate will likely be lower than 53.5%, assuming that you are no longer earning active income from employment. How to open and contribute to your RRSP. So you're probably thinking that all sounds great. How do I get started? Well, I'll go over the process for opening an RRSP account in three easy steps. Step one is to first open an RRSP account, and there's a couple of options here. You can go 
to any financial institution like any of the banks in Canada such as BMO, TD, RBC, etc. and ask to open an RRSP account. Another option is to open an RRSP account online. After the pandemic, there are now many options when it comes to self-directed investment accounts. The ones I like to use are Wellsimple and Questrade. I would suggest Wellsimple if you are a beginner and just getting familiar with investing. The platform is very intuitive and easy to use and probably the biggest advantage of Wellsimple are zero commission trades on major stock exchanges. When it comes to Questrade, I would suggest it if you're looking for more of a sophisticated trading platform in Canada as well as more investment products. Questrade also has very competitive low fees when it comes to trading as well. It's easy to set up an RRSP account with Wellsimple and Questrade. All you have to do is follow the prompts through the registration process online. I'll provide a link to sign up for Wellsimple and Questrade down below, as well as the benefits you can get from using my link. A question that you might have is, can I open multiple RRSP accounts? The answer is yes, you can definitely open multiple RRSP accounts across different platforms as long as your total contributions are within your RRSP limit, which we will discuss more about later in this video. Step number two is to invest your contributions. Something I want to emphasize here is that you have to invest your contributions. It will do absolutely nothing for you if you just move your money into your RRSP RSP account and don't invest because if your money doesn't earn any investment income, the value of your money actually decreases over time due to inflation. There's a couple of ways you can earn investment income. You can earn interest income in a high yield savings account, GICs and bonds, or earn dividend income and capital gains by investing in stocks and ETFs. The type of investment you make really depends on how much risk you can stomach because let's face it, investments go up and down over time. So make sure that you consult with a financial advisor or do your own thorough research before investing your own money. If you are new to investing, let me know in the comment section if you want a video going through the different investment types in more detail. Now, the third step is optional, but it's highly recommended. You set up an automatic deposit. When it comes to contributing big sums like $5,000 or $10,000, it's so much more manageable if it's contributed over the course of a year. If your goal is to contribute a total of $5,000 annually, set up automated contributions of $417 every month on the day your paycheck gets deposited. That way, it's a no-brainer way to save towards your retirement. Key considerations. I want to go over a few key considerations about RRSPs so that you fully take advantage of them and not make any expensive mistakes. Due date. Remember that you can contribute by February 29th, 2024 to get a tax deduction for your 2023 tax year. Also, any unused contributions can be carried forward to a future year. Contribution limit. How much you can contribute depends on your RRSP contribution limit, which can be found on your notice of assessment from the previous year's tax return, or you could even log into your online CRA account. Basically, your contribution limit is a lower of 18% of your earned income, like employment income, but not investment income, or the 2023 RRSP limit of $30,780, which gets indexed to inflation every year. If you do end up over contributing over your RRSP limit, by accident, you will be subject to a hefty penalty of 1% per month on the over-contributed amount. So make sure to check your limit to avoid any headaches down the line. Withdrawals. You should also consider your RRSP as a long-term investment account. There is no point in contributing if you are going to withdraw from your RRSP in the following year. As much as you enjoyed a tax deduction when making the contribution, any withdrawals from your RRSP will get added to your income and get taxed. Ideally, you'd make withdrawals from your RRSP during retirement, anticipating a lower tax bracket. This way, you'd also enjoy the tax-free growth of your investment portfolio within your RRSP. Now, the only exception to withdrawing from your RSP is under the home buyer's plan, which means that you can withdraw up to $35,000 tax-free as a first-time home buyer. If you're looking for ways to lower your taxes this tax season and potentially get a refund even after the tax year has ended, you can achieve this by contributing to your RSP. Make sure to contribute by February 29th, 2024 to get that tax deduction on your 2023 tax year. If you want to start contributing but don't have an account, use my link for Will Simple and Questrade to receive a bonus and to create an account to start investing. There are also tax advantage accounts like the FHSA and TFSA that we didn't cover today, so let me know 
know in the comment section below if you are interested in a detailed video on these accounts. And if you're looking for additional ways to reduce your taxes outside of being an employee, I do have a video for you to check out linked over here. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.